So instead of renting out a nice apartment in Amsterdam for 1500 euros a month, um, I decided to live on the boat. 28-year-old Hugo from the Netherlands is living the dream. He is solo sailing around the world, exploring new places and meeting new people every day. How did he manage to get himself a sailboat and afford this lifestyle at his age? Let's find out! This boat is a Genosun Legend from 1986. So it's quite an older boat, it's 36 year old, that's why it's all the nice teak everywhere. Um, there was a time where you could still deforest the whole uh, a whole forest just to build a, a nice boat. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's an older boat, um, but I like it. It's a quick sailor, it has the older lines as well. And yeah, I really like it. All right. Um, can you show me around? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, of course, this is the, the living area. So it is quite roomy. Um, it's about four meters wide, I think. So this is the living area. You can also lift this up if I have more people having uh, coming over for dinner. Um, then of course we have my working area. Um, I installed like a large screen. I have my laptop here. If I want to work remotely, um, which I still do, sometimes uh, I have here my uh, my desk space. So that's really nice. Um, then we have the the guest room uh, over here. So if I take people with me, they stay over there. Um, so it's quite a wide bed for two people uh, could fit in there. Um, then of course we have the galley over here. So with uh, yeah, quite standard double sink, the large fridge where everything is on top of each other. So you always have to crawl in because the thing you want is always on the bottom. Um, oven, yeah, my pots and pans. Something that always needs to be kept closed because if you go sailing with it open, which happens sometimes, everything everything, uh, everything drops out. So S I'm so slowly losing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> bits. Slowly losing bits. <laughs> So do you do most of the cooking? Yes, I do most of the cooking um, and I like to cook on board and as well with my budget it's always, uh, well always, we're mostly cooking on board. Um, I really love like the cooking, I'm really good at uh, cooking these ones. These are amazing. You can buy them in Spain for like 2 euros 70 and you have like a big pizza and they taste really nice. So, uh, But I also cook fresh of course. Um, <laughs> I also like to cook fresh. Great commercial. Great for, uh, commercial. Trips with you go. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. What's more? What's more? Um, yeah. So over here is the, my storage room. So this is everything that I have with me. Um, projects. I have my paragliding stuff with me as well. That's a large bag in the back. Um, so I want to go paragliding whenever I come to like volcanoes islands or stuff uh, where there are mountains close by, and the weather is permitting. Um, because I have my paragliding license, so of course we have like a, a little toilet area, and then in the front, that's my uh, the magic happens, of course. This is my uh, my bedroom. Um, so yeah, it's a classical V bird, so it's about two meters wide over here, and it's forty centimeters all the way in the back. So if someone stays here, you really have to know each other and uh, yeah, like each other. Get comfortable. Get comfortable with each other. So Your, yeah. Your uh, ceiling is coming down. My ceiling came down because of the heat, I think, so I have to glue it back. Um, so that's a project for this winter. Because I like sailing more than doing projects or cleaning my boat and stuff like that. Yeah. Of course I clean it now. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so how does a young guy like you end up on a sailboat traveling the world? How do you do it? Um, well, I read multiple books um, and most of them are about like doing it cheaply and just go. Yeah. I think this is a good one. Uh, that inspired me. Get real, get gone. It's about uh, becoming a modern gypsy, sea gypsy. Um, and that book is all about just going for it and not staying in harbor, not uh, waiting for the most expensive boat to buy. Uh, just buy a cheap boat and go out. And I think that's what you see out here as well. Like the people that are doing it, they're all doing it all mostly like normal production boats, not blue water cruises, stuff like that. You see weird small boats, you see everything coming about, but the people that are actually sailing are mostly like people doing it cheaply. So that's how I did it as well, just bought a you know, yeah. cheap old boat, fix it up, and yeah, saved a lot of money in the Netherlands for like five years. Yes, because you lived on it 
in the Netherlands as well? Yes, I lived on it uh, for almost four years in the Netherlands, uh, also to save up money. So instead of renting out a nice apartment in Amsterdam for 1500 euros a month, um, I decided to live on the boat. Um, and that's way cheaper to live on the boat. I could do all the work to the boat. Um, and it's a neat, yeah, really nice way to already get used to the living there. Of course, the winters in the Netherlands uh, aren't perfect for staying on the boat. Um, there were some times where you could even ice skate around the boat. <laughs> um, but that's one of the big uh, yeah, reasons why I would, could be able to afford it now, just by working hard and saving up yeah, more than half of my income. Yes. So you did a lot of work on the boat, right? Yes, yes. Uh, most of it is outside, but one of the larger projects is the engine room. Uh, because on the, uh, last year, um, the engine um, yeah, died. <laughs> so I decided to get in a whole new engine. Uh, so I put in a whole new engine, uh, a nice new Beta Marie. 38 horsepower, and I did everything myself. Um, yeah, and I did all the electronics, so I put in lithium batteries, but they're under the bed somewhere down there. Um, put in lithium batteries, uh, I read it almost off the wiring because it was pretty old and almost gone, it was turning bad, um, so I did that. Um, I put in like good Wi Fi because I like to work remotely, and some people I take with me work remotely as well. Um, most of the electronics and everything that's due to sailing, so a new mainsail, new roller furler um, installed, um, some, uh, some solar panels outside, and yeah, lots of things like that. And there are more projects on the way for this winter. Yeah. Why sailing? Why sailing? To me, it's the best way to travel the world in a easy way, in a nice way, with like your whole home with you. So not picking up all your stuff, putting it in a bag every time, uh, but really taking all your stuff with you and really taking the time to travel as well. So I think with sailing, it's possible to travel for years on end. I think you have some uh, some people that are traveling for decades on end. Um, I think that's something that's possible with sailing, and I think you get tired other ways of uh, traveling way quick. Have you sailed all your life? Well, I've been sailing all my life, but only like a little bit. So only like during the, I've only had lessons for one week. I'm a little uh, optimist. Um, and then we went sailing every summer with my uh, parents. So we mostly uh, chartered a boat in Greece uh, for like one or two weeks each year. Um, so that's where most of my sailing experience comes from. Um, but I'd never sailed alone before I left on this solo trip, so. Yeah. So you're sailing solo. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm sailing solo, but I'm taking uh, people with me uh, all the time. Um, so I started yeah, started out sailing solo. And I sailed solo for the first two days, and then the first people came on board that I met via the internet. So I meet random strangers on the internet, um, give them a call, a video call, and then if I think they're cool, then they uh, yeah. They just come on board and sail with me for like uh, a week or a month or how long they want. Yeah, so now we're outside um, and that's one thing I like, really like about Chinos. So they have like a lot of room outside because mostly you're living outside when you're sailing into nice countries. Um, so I really love that about the Chinos. They most of the time have a really large cockpit where you can sit with like, I think we've been here with like 16 people already. Um, put all the dinghies behind it and then just have like a, a little party here or like a nice drinks. So that's what I really like. Um, yeah, for the rest I just try to keep it very simple because everything you install on the boat is maintenance as well. <laughs> which I've already found out. So um, I try to keep everything really simple. So I have like my solar panel um, on this side, which is adjustable so I can point it at the sun, which really makes a big difference for like how much um, energy you're uh, getting back. Um, I think one of the best things I installed or made myself as well is the lazy bag. Um, so I made a lazy bag and so the sail just drops in. I think that's also really something that you really need to have if you're sailing solo. Um, and I have all my controls for sailing solo. I have all my controls over here. Does it take a lot more uh, thinking through and preparation to sail solo, you think? 
Uh, it definitely takes more thinking through. So before you start doing a movement or like picking up your anchor or docking somewhere, you really need to think through because for now I'm mostly sailing solo, but I have people with me, but most of them have never sailed before. Um, so they're, of course they, they try and learn it and if they stay on longer, they can do night shifts and stuff like that. But most of the time I'm actually sailing solo and I just have some guests with me. Um, so yeah, I really have to think things through because like you have to make sure like where's the wind coming from, where am I gonna dock, what's the docking situation, can I ask someone to help me a little bit, uh, maybe. Because mostly docking in the harbor is the hardest part, because that's where like you're close to boats, you're close to the, the rocks, you're close to everything. Um, anchoring is really easy because like you have a lot of space and um, yeah, you just walk forwards, put the anchor down, um, you can even sail away from anchor solo, like stuff like that. Like, I really like the challenge as well, so like after them it's like a nice puzzle to like figure out like how am I going to do this mo maneuver solo. Um, so yeah, I really like that part about it as well. So everything... Um, it's controls at the mast, right? Or yes, sorry. I have all my lines for the sail handling here at the mast. So I have my uh, main halyard, I have my uh, Genoa halyard over here. I do the reefing over here as well. Um, because if you're sailing solo, you can't. Because if you're reefing, you have to take in the the reef gringo over here as well. If you do single line reefing, you have to have so much. This boat is not set up for it, and you have to have so much line. And if something gets stuck, you need to go here anyway. Um, so I have these, uh, I think they're called granny bars. I can just connect myself here and I have like a pretty safe area to, to do everything. Um, so yeah, I do everything over here for the, the, the sail handling or picking up and taking down the sails. And I really like it that way because you have way more control. You can see everything really clearly. And yeah, it gets you used as well to go out when sailing and do that in a safe way. Instead of becoming afraid of it, staying in the cockpit and everything gets way harder to do it over there. Like pick up your mainsail in the cockpit is almost impossible and if you do it here it's really easy because you can use your weight. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if something happens you're already used to getting out here in front while sailing instead of like being afraid of it. You've you've sewn the how do you call it? Again? A lazy bag. The lazy bag yourself, yeah. right? Yes, it was my first uh, sewing project. I did it with my mom. So a uh, shout out to my mom. <laughs> um, so yeah, we made a, I always wanted a lazy bag because at first I didn't have anything. I didn't have a lazy jacks. So when the sail would drop down, it would just like go all the way there and just drop in the side. And I always hated that. Um, so yeah, I really wanted a, a lazy bag. So I took some designing and I uh, watched some YouTube videos like, uh, like you do and made some drawings. And yeah, then just uh, made the whole lazy bag myself. So it has like a separate piece in front and it has like the, the long part with a big zipper on top. Um, yeah, and it just drops in down there so I can drop the mainsail really quickly and makes it really easy. And as well, if you're like reefing, it keeps the sail nicely in there. So that's one thing I would highly recommend to everyone that's sailing. What's your budget? My budget, um, I'm aiming around 1500 euros a month. Um, so yeah, usually I regard it in like 500 euros for boat maintenance and not every month I'm paying 500 euros for boat maintenance, but if you need like a new main seal, you need to save up for it as well. Um, so 500 euros for boat maintenance and then about a thousand euros for like travel and regular costs. Um, and if I take people along with me, I ask them some money as well. Uh, so they just pay like a, a fee per day to stay with me because I'm providing like the travel, I'm providing them a place to stay and yeah. It's way cheaper than a hostel, uh, but it's a nice way of traveling, so it's a, a cool experience for people as well. So where do you find the people that come with you? Um, I'm always find I'm on the internet, so uh, there are random strangers that I've never met before. Um, but I don't really use like the regular websites for like crew finder or stuff like that. Um, I mostly find them via Instagram, so I have my Instagram at the Pinta Project. Uh, where people can find me and they, yeah, sometimes I just post on there like I'm looking for a new crew and then people react and I try to schedule them. Um, or I go on dates because I'm single, so I go on dates and sometimes people come with me, uh, which is also really nice. So it's also a nice way to meet people and uh, yeah, take That's them along on an adventure. a fun first date. That's a fun first <laughs> date always, so it always works, uh, taking them to the boat, um, saying you're a sailor, uh, you're good with lines, so that's always, always good. 
what's the the best thing you've encountered so far? The best thing I've encountered. Um, well, I've just met a lot of nice people along the way. So there are a lot of Dutch people sailing. I think there's a, a huge amount of Dutch people sailing, especially close to here. Um, so that's really nice, meeting people from all different kinds of yeah uh, ways in the world. Um, so also meeting people from New Zealand, meeting people from Portugal, everywhere where you go, you meet nice people. Um, yeah, and you go on adventures, start exploring the areas, and that's really fun as well. So I think it's mostly about the people and the areas where you are, are of course, pretty nice, and the weather is nice. Yeah. So has boat life the last three months been what you imagined it would be? Uh, yeah, I think it has been imagined what I w it would be, but I was like hesitated, like because like I was going alone, I was going solo, so I was a bit hesitated about like what's gonna be, am I gonna enjoy it? Um, so my backup plan was always like, oh, I can always sail back, sell the boat, and start living a normal life. Um, but I think after one or two weeks, I called my mom and I was like, well, mom, I don't think I'm gonna come back like in the coming years. So um, I really enjoy it, and yeah, there's so much more to explore. So I'm really looking forward to that. So what's your plan? What's my plan? Well, my, my first plan was to sail around the world for about five years. Um, so this first year is going to be the Mediterranean, this first season. So uh, now it's October and still want to sail a little bit further, but then uh, put the boat somewhere for the winter. Um, but then next uh, next season, I want to have the whole, uh, uh, sail the whole Mediterranean and then cross at the end of next year, cross towards Brazil or maybe like uh, the Caribbean. Uh, and then afterwards, do a few seasons in that area, cross to the Panama Canal, and then go all the way on the, the Pacific, and everything that's up to there. But like, uh, like I learned from some sailors, like sailors make their plans when it's low tide in the sand, so every six hours they're, they're gone again. I hope you enjoyed hearing Hugo's story. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. In the next video I'm meeting John, who has just bought what he calls his last boat. A beautiful wooden schooner that just needs a little bit of TLC.